who are my mother and my brothers. The Gospel for this 10th Sunday in Ordinary Time is taken from Mark chapter 3, verse 20 to 35. In the account, we hear that the mother of Jesus and his relatives came looking for him. They wanted to take him home because they have seen the opposition to Jesus they worried for his life. They worried about the message he was giving. They worried that he was not taking care of himself. How many times do we ourselves worry about our family members? So we find a family concerned about the well-being of a family member. But Jesus says when he was told that his family members were looking for him, he asked the question, who are my mother and my brothers? Those who do the will of God, they are my brothers, my sisters, my mother. Here, Jesus lays down the conditions for the new family of God that he came to create beyond natural family. Belonging to that family, the new family of God, requires that you do the will of God, that you listen to God's word, that you be a person who follows the commandments of God, and that you carry out the mission that God sent you here on earth to accomplish. Jesus was about the mission that God gave him, for he said, my food is to do the will of God and accomplish the will of the one who sent me. And that will required, he says elsewhere, to lay down my life for the sake of those that I love. So doing God's will requires that you do the mission that God sent you. Each and every one of us has a unique mission. My mission is different from your mission. However, our individual missions all add up to the collective mission of God that God has confided in each and every one of us so that we can bring beauty to this earth, so that we can bring the reign of God to bear within this world. And we find that Jesus faced many obstacles in realizing this mission, in doing God's will. One we find today, family. Wanting him out of love for, for a family member, wanting him not to do the mission because is too unsafe, is too risky. It could lead to your death. But Jesus did not mind what the family was thinking. He knew that he had a bigger mission. For he came to establish a relationship between all of us that is not simply a relationship of blood, it's not blood relationship, but God relationship that Jesus came to establish. He faced the obstacle today from his detractors, the scribes and the Pharisees, who saw the Son of God and called him the Son of the Devil. What a contradiction. What a blindness. They had closed their mind to the power of God. They have shut their eyes to the bright light that came from heaven above, standing before them, showing them signs and wonders that pointed to the new reign of God that he was inaugurating by his presence among us. And he told them that Satan cannot be fighting against Satan. Why won't you recognize the work of God that I was doing? And he said, their sins cannot be forgiven. Why? Because they have blocked their hearts. It's a sin against the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the one that brings the truth about God to us. 
and brings the truth about ourselves to us that brings to us, as in a mirror, our own sinfulness so that we can ask for forgiveness. But when you cannot recognize your own sinfulness, when you cannot then ask for God's forgiveness because you don't recognize your sinfulness, then it's hard for you to be saved. But we see also in the first reading today, our first parents, they, like Jesus, faced some temptations in their own lives. They faced some obstacles. In this case, the serpent, Satan, came and lured them, and they allowed their hearts to be taken away from the will of God, and they lost paradise. How many times in your life have you lost your way in life? Because you are distracted. Because you are pursuing those false realities that you think will give you happiness. And then you miss your mission. You miss the road. You miss the mark. Like our first parents. But we are reminded in the second reading today. Yes, we face many challenges in carrying out the mission of God. St. Paul says, we will never be discouraged because the grace of God abides with us, overflows in us, so that even though our external frames are wasting, even though we face many ups and downs in life, God is renewing us from within. For what we are dealing with, the power of God sometimes is unseen, but is at work in us. Therefore, we cannot lose what is eternal for what is transitory. For these challenges, these temptations, even the opposition to your mission that you find around you, St. Paul says, they will all come to pass. Brothers and sisters, each and every one of us must, like Jesus, Focus on the mission that God has sent you here to accomplish for God. By doing God's will. By resisting temptation. By standing up against the powers of the evil one. Yes, some will say, what do you mean by the evil one? Satan, demon, these things are real. In the sense that there are negative forces that war against you. There are bad people that want to derail you. There are some people who think that you are out of your mind. I mean, for us, Catholic priests, how many times have you heard people say to you, Oh, you are a priest? How can you live that kind of life? It's a lonely life. You are not married. You don't have your own children. Yes, like the family of Jesus, there might be some of us for whom people think you are out of your mind. Because indeed, in a world that we live in today, people who choose certain kinds of life that might appear strange are often considered maybe out of their mind. However, deep within your soul, each and every one of us search within your soul to find that voice of God that is calling you to stand up, to stand strong, to hold on. Like St. Paul says, do not be discouraged in doing the will of God. And as you do this will of God, may God's grace be upon you. And may Jesus, who has welcomed us into his family, the family of God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. That's the new family to which each and every one of us belongs. That's the family that we can remain in if we remain in God's love, if we do God's will. And we cannot do it by our own power or might, but by the Spirit, by the grace, abundant grace, that we ask the Lord to give to each and every one of us as we walk the walk of faith with Jesus our Lord. Amen.